today's video, we're going to talk about tree diagrams, which is another really useful representation for probability. What are tree diagrams? Well, tree diagrams are used to display multiple outcomes, and they're often easier to use than just listing all of the outcomes together. We use tree diagrams when we have things happening, um, like many events happening one after another. Whenever you have a tree diagram, know that we are multiplying along the branches and adding between the branches. This will make more sense in the examples that we do together. There are two types of events that are really well explained with tree diagrams. One is with replacement. So this is when you have an event where you're selecting something from a box. And when you select, let's say, your candy from a box, you put the candy back in the box before you select a second time. The other type of event is without replacement. So something that's without replacement, if we take again the candy in a box idea, you would pick a candy, you would maybe eat it, and then you would pick a second candy. So the first candy you picked uh, affects what outcomes you have left in the box. And we're gonna be doing examples with and without replacement to make sure we understand how this works. Example one, the probability that Sam hits the bullseye is 0 0.8. Sam takes two shots. Assuming that the success for each shot is independent from the previous shot, represent the information in tree diagram and then find the probabilities. Okay, so we're in a situation here that our person is shooting two times. So as soon as we see two shots, so a repetition, our first idea should be that we're going to be using a tree diagram because that's going to be the best representation for us. Each shot is going to represent one branch. So we start off. We have the beginning and we have our first shot. So our first shot. And Sam can either hit the bullseye or he can miss it. Our probabilities always go on the branches. So the probability of hitting is 0 0.8. And these two probabilities, uh, when you have a branch leaving a single spot, these two probabilities need to add up to one. So that means that the probability that he's going to miss is 0 0.2. And then regardless of what happened in the first shot, he has a second shot. So we go ahead and we have our second shot. And again, we have the same possibilities for outcomes. Notice that the outcomes are what goes at the end of the branch and then our probably is gonna go on the branch itself. So we created a tree diagram that looks something like this. Now we're ready to find the probabilities. A, find the probability that Sam hits two bullseyes. Well, hitting two bullseyes, that means he needs to hit and then hit. So for part A, we're gonna to need to have the probability of hit and hit. Um, in, prob in probability, we're going to see that the word and is often going to refer to multiplication, as is the case here. So we're going to have 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So the probability of this happening is 0 0.64. Next, we're going to have the probability of hitting one bullseye. Hitting exactly one bullseye, that means that we're going to be either in hit, miss, or miss hit. So here we have the word or that just came into play and this is normally attributed to addition. So when you're going along a branch, you're multiplying. So we have the probability of hit and the probability of miss. And then we have or the probability of miss and the probability of hit. So what we're gonna have here is probably of hit and miss is 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 or addition, the probability of miss times the probability of hit. And when you do this, you're going to get 0 0.32. And for part C, we're asked, what is the probability that he hits at least one bullseye? Well, at least one bullseye, that means we could have one bullseye or more. So exactly one we know is hit, miss, hit, and or hit, miss. We did that in part B. And then at least one, well, that means we can also have the option of getting two. Now, there's two ways that we could solve this question. We could add up all the three probabilities together and we would find our answer. Or what we can do is we can subtract one by the probability that he misses twice. So if we do this calculation here, 
the product that he misses twice, 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, and we subtract 1, we're going to get 0 0.96, which would have been the same thing as adding up the probabilities that you get at least one bullseye. Example 2. A bag contains 7 marbles, all of the same size. 5 of the marbles are yellow and 2 are blue. 2 marbles are chosen without replacement. Find the probability that both are yellow and 2 marbles are different color. Okay, we're in a situation here that we are selecting two marbles. So we're doing something twice. So this is an indicator that we want to use a tree diagram. So we start and we have our first selection. For our first selection, we have the option of either picking a yellow marble or a blue marble. We're told we have a total of seven marbles. So my totals will be seven. And I have five marbles that are yellow and two marbles that are blue. What we're doing is we are re we are choosing without replacement. What does without replacement indicate? It indicates that we when we select a marble, we don't put it back in the bag. So if we think about what happens when we select a yellow one, well, we still have a choice of either having yellow or blue, but now there's only four yellows left because you've selected one, and it's out of a total of six marbles. Same thing for blue. If we've selected a yellow, well, we still have two blues left, and this time we have six marbles to choose from. We repeat the same process for the other option. So for the other uh, branch, what we're saying is that we've selected a blue already, so we still have five yellows in the bag. However, there's only six total marbles left. So this is five out of six. And then we've already selected a blue, so there's only one blue left out of six. If you did your tree diagram correctly, you should notice that all of your branches where they start branching out should add up to one. So these two add up to one, these two add up to one. So I know my tree diagram is correct. I'm now going to use my tree diagram in order to answer the next questions. So for part A, we're asked what is the probability that both marbles are yellow? Well, both marbles being yellow, that only happens once, and it's when we choose yellow and yellow. So as a probability of this happening, well, that's going to be 5 out of 7 times 4 out of 6. Remember that along a branch, we multiply, and when we choose many branches together, we are adding. When you put this into your calculator, it simplifies to 10 over 21. For part B, we're asked for the probability of having two marbles of different color. The two options we have for different color is yellow and blue or blue and yellow. So we're selecting two branches, so we're going to be adding those together. And when you do this calculation, you get an answer of 10 out of 21. Example 3. The diagram below shows the probability for events A and B, where we're told that the probability that not a is happening is equal to p question a write down the value of p well if p is this value here well we know that these two branches need to add up to one so if this is one fifth then automatically p needs to be four fifths next question find the probability of b well the probability of b this is going to be either we end the branch here or we end the branch here so in order to find the probability of B, we have two situations that could arise. Either we get A and then we get B, or we get not A and then B. So when we're writing the probability of B, this has to be the two options of the branches. So we have the probabilities of each of these branches, and when we put them into your calculators, we get that the probability of B is 7 out of 20, or if you want to put it as a decimal, 0.35. Part C, find the probability of B given A. Okay, so for this conditional probability, we're given that A has happened. So therefore, we're already on this part of this branch. And we're looking for the probability that B is happening. So for this type of conditional probability, since we know A is happening, which is the first event, then we can see on the diagram that the probability of B happening would be 1 fourth. So we're going to say that the probability of B given A is one fourth. Part D is very different from part A. 
because notice how we reverse the letters. So now we're looking for the probably that not A is happening given that B has happened. Well, given that B has happened, B is not one of our choices to start with. So when we have it in this order, we have to use the full formula from the formula booklet for conditional probability. So using the formula from the formula booklet, we can write down. So if we look at the numerator part, we're looking for the probability of not A and B. What is the probability of not A and B? Well, that's not A and B. So it's this single branch here. We know that probably of this branch can be written as 4 over 5 times 3 out of 8. And what's the probability of B? Well, the probability of B, we found it in part B. That's 7 out of 20. When you put all of this into your calculator, you're going to get a final answer of 6 over 7, which you can round, if you want to, to 0 0.857 to the nearest significant figure. Example 4. The following probabilities involving event A and B are given. We can see that the probability of not A is equal to 1 fourth, which is visible on the tree diagram already. The probability of B given A has happened is 2 thirds. So given A has happened, meaning I'm on this branch, that what is the probability of B? That is 2 thirds. So that's also given on the tree diagram. The probability of not B given not A is three-fifths. So given not A means I'm already at this point of the tree diagram. The probability of not B happening is three out of five. So we can put in the three out of five as the probability of not B given that not A has happened. Copy and complete this tree diagram shown below. Okay, so now that we've put all the information given, we can complete this tree diagram. We know that all the branches need to add up to 1, right? So every area that branches out needs to add up to 1. So if we have 1 fourth for not A, we're going to have 3 fourths for, not, for A. 2 thirds for B, that means we're going to have 1 third for not B. And then 3 fifths for not B, we're going to have 2 fifths for B. Part B. Find the probability that we have A and B. So here we have to realize this is the intersection. So both of them need to be happening, A and B. So the only branch in which A and B are happening is this branch here. So the probability of A and B is going to be the probability of A, which is four, 3 fourths, times the probability of B, which is 2 thirds, which when you put into your calculator simplifies to 1 half. Next, what is the probability of B? The probability of B, well, we're in a situation where B is happening here and here. So I'm going to get B if I have A and B, or if I have not A and B. So we need to add these two branches together in order to get the probability of B. So the probability of B is adding those two branches. So 3 over 4 times 2 thirds plus, or 1 out of 4 times 2 out of 5. When you simplify this into the calculator, you're going to get that the answer is 3 fifths. And for question C, what is the probability of A given B has happened? Since it's given that B has happened and B is the second event, I'm going to need to use the conditional probability formula. Using the formula, we get the probability of A and B over the probability of B. We know what the probability of B is because we did that in the question before, so that's 3 out of 5. Now, what is the probability of A and B? That's 1 half because we did that in part A. And then you simplify this, you get 5 out of 6.